everyone to please silence all electronic devices at this time. I need to silence my own, I think. Uh, the first, first thing on the agenda, I want to remind everybody that our retreat is July 10th. It will be at Tidewater Community College Student Center on the second floor, and we will be beginning that morning at 8.15. And this evening we will have a closed session following our formal meeting. Um, other than that, I have nothing else for admin matters. Does anyone else have anything to share? Yes? Uh, quickly, and I was, I had a, some of you were there with me, so feel free to weigh in. But the Education yes. Foundation, the recent uh, reception on, on site for the newest home. With the, uh, with the student speaker and we saw the beans <laughs> up and and it was just it was a very nice event and I wanted to uh, recognize two organizations uh, reaching out to our students with scholarships and, and lovely acknowledgments and luncheons and such and one is CBDX and that's the uh, the younger the the 40 and under younger set for the, uh, the central business district and they've They've been growing and become more generous each year with uh, with, a, with scholarship funds for the Princess Anne students. And another group was, this dates back to March, but the Kempsville Branch 99 Fleet Reserve Association, uh, and Dan Kenny is president, and they provided, uh, they had an essay contest with students from Bayside Green Run, Green Run Collegiate, and Princess Anne, and it was a lovely dinner back in March that I was remiss in not mentioning. So. That's what okay. I have. Thank you. Anyone else? All right. So, Dr. Spence, we're ready for our, the next workshop, our, our first workshop item, <clears throat> Real world, world Pathways. Okay. Well, here's my introduction. You better take advantage of this way you can, because this is Amy's last workshop with us. <laughs> and uh, she's going to talk about the work that her team has been doing around Real World Pathways, but... I know we all wish her well on her next steps, but this is our very last board meeting with Dr. Cashwell. Yeah. Not that we're clapping that we're, you're leaving. We're just I happy know. for you. Well, I am thrilled Listen. to have uh, an opportunity to be able to present tonight, and I would like to thank you all for the warm congratulations and heartfelt well wishes over the past few weeks, um, and also thank you and the Virginia Beach staff and community for 21 fantastic years. Aww. This is an amazing community, and I wish you all well. So bittersweet goodbye and you may recall that the power went out the last time we were <laughs> to do this presentation so it was fortuitous in a way because it um, meant i was able to present on my last day here so it worked out but without further ado since the power outage till now we get to present um, for you regarding real world pathways for our students so good evening chair anderson vice chair mcdonald school board members <laughs> The Department of Teaching and Learning will highlight a few of the real-world pathways and experiences we offer our students throughout their K-12 time with us. Through Goal 2, our strategic plan, we lift up this notion of multiple pathways for students, calling for all students to experience personalized learning opportunities to prepare them for their futures, whether it be post-secondary education, employment, or military service. Furthermore, our graduate profile highlights attributes that are critical to ensuring that <coughs> graduates are future ready. Seems to be a little delay here. There we go. You may recall that last year we shared a presentation with the board on some updates to our academic and career planning process. We shared how we had launched pathways for students and their families to explore a number of relevant fields, laid out the related courses needed to engage in those fields, and had even highlighted areas that were relevant to our region, such as maritime and cybersecurity. We also shared a number of tools and videos that are a part of our ACP site and can be utilized by students and their families. Furthermore, you might recall that we hosted for the first time this school year a Navigating the Journey Night in order to better provide our families and our students um, information as they encounter the many pathways available to them. 
When we shared our academic and career planning process, we shared a bit about how this process is not just for high school students, but for all students pre-K through 12 as they move through the phases of awareness, exploration, and eventually readiness. While there are specific academic and career planning activities along the way, which involve taking interest inventories and setting post-secondary career goals, and engaging in course planning, of course, these experiences alone do not ensure that students are future ready. It's their everyday experiences in the classroom. So because of that, there is an intentional, intentional focus on ensuring that our curricular experiences and opportunities allow students to have frequent and purposeful, authentic experiences, first to become aware then explore and then engage in readiness activities that will provide them the real world experiences and multiple pathways we would want them to aspire to. So how do we ensure that students have opportunities to meet their academic and career planning goals? Well, one answer can be found within our pre-K through 12 curriculum, which purposefully provides opportunities for students to transition from awareness to exploration to readiness and I'll now turn the presentation over to Dr. Hughes, who will show how there's an intentional focus on future ready, even in our pre-K curriculum. All right, so as Dr. Cashwell indicated, curriculum includes learning events for students to engage in academic and career planning, or ACP, through the lens of awareness. As students learn and develop, it is important to provide opportunities for them to explore and examine the possibilities for their future. While we are certainly not able to provide an exhaustive list of curricular connections, the following examples will provide the board with an idea of how elementary students are introduced to real world experiences through, throughout their school career. Pre-K curriculum is written by embedded mm -hmm. learning events that provide experiences for students to develop awareness of careers and jobs in the world around them. The kindergarten curriculum is closely aligned to the pre-K curriculum and includes content integration through language arts and units of study. At the conclusion of the units, students should be able to describe jobs. Students should also be able to identify the workplaces of people and discuss possibilities for future jobs. As students progress through the curriculum, career exploration continues and students begin to research careers through virtual experiences. In third grade, language arts and content integration provide opportunities through the curriculum for students to research and explore careers. On the screen, you will see aspects from some of our resources, an article for students to read, a snip of a video clip, research questions, and a safari life site that students can engage in for research and careers such as field scientists. On this slide, you will see the choice board from Define STEM, a resource which provides students experiences through integrated performance tasks across subject areas and various careers as they apply content knowledge to field-based experiences. Here is an example of a computer science performance task. As you see, students are thinking like scientists using authentic tools that illustrate the effect increased saltwater has on the fresh ecosystem. Beyond classroom curricular experiences, elementary students explore careers and jobs through field experiences and field trips. <clears throat> One such field experience is the fourth grade Young People Symphony performed by the Virginia Symphony Orchestra at the Sandler Center, where students are immersed in the world of music and associated careers. Learning from this experience is then tied into the curriculum within their music class throughout the year. New this year was the downstream collaborative field experience that was created to connect fourth grade students with field experts to examine how our choices and actions affect our shared watershed. Fourth grade students at Allenton Elementary partnered with education students, science students, and professors at Virginia Wesleyan University to develop a model that included a year-long school-based investigation, weekend family investigations, and a culminating off-site field experience with higher ed students and field experts. The Department of Teaching and Learning worked closely with Virginia Wesleyan University to develop partnership goals as seen on the screen. The goal is to expand the program to all fourth graders in the coming years. You may already be aware that every fifth grade student has the opportunity to take a trip to NAS Oceana for the Airshow STEM Lab Day. 
During the visit, students engage in hands-on activities and learn about STEM careers in a real-world setting. What you may not know is that learning does not end after the trip. Fifth grade content extends the learning into the classroom by providing students the opportunity to make connections through the integration of a STEM lab day in the curriculum. Students have opportunities to engage with the Lynn Haven River Now through various field experiences. Shown on the screen is a Lynn Haven River Now project called Growing Wetlands in the Classroom and is an opportunity <coughs> that allows teachers and students to grow wetland plants in their classrooms and schoolyards. This partnership with Lynn Haven River Now, as well as a partnership with the Chesapeake Bay Foundation, has been well established and embedded into several facets of the division's educational program. Now, Dr. DeFries will continue the presentation by showing how secondary students move from awareness and exploration to readiness for college and careers. Thank you, Dr. Hughes. So as students transition from exploring to readiness for college and careers, they also encounter cross-curricular learning events. Regardless of what subject area students are engaged in, they are making cross-curricular -connect cross connections in authentic ways in order to experience the integrated work of a career professional. For example, the picture on the left side of this slide illustrates a middle school class in English engaging in real life problem solving related to water scarcity as they read the novel A Long Walk to Water. On the right side of this slide you will see students engaging in an activity as they take on the role of an environmental scientist and they learn the importance of oysters serving as biological filters of the day improving overall water quality. Opportunities such as these continue throughout high school. For example, through the participation in a field experience, all oceanography students take on the role of scientists with field experiences. Pictured on this slide are students engaging in work on a Chesapeake Bay Foundation boat. Some of you may remember the trip from the 2017 board retreat to learn about the wildlife in the bay and practice environmental literacy yourselves. Building the capacity of teachers to engage students in authentic cross-curricular career experiences, such as the ones that we've shared with you, is essential. Teachers must also experience the same authentic work of career professionals so that they understand how to develop effective learning experiences for students. Many of these professional learning experiences are available to teachers in collaboration with organizations such as the Chesapeake Bay Foundation and the Lynn Haven River Now Project. A few of our division's high schools have created job shadowing experiences for our students. Pictured here, you'll see uh, students at Princess Anne High School and their career mentors preparing for a day of job shadowing. Princess Anne has partnered with the Central Business District Association for many years, offering this experience to nearly 100 interested students per year. <laughs> This year, the Entrepreneurship and Business Academy hosted their first annual shadow day for all sophomores in the academy. With an astounding 42 area businesses and 125 students participating. Check out the hashtag EBA job shadow for some great pictures of the event. Beginning in the fall of 2018, the Office of Technical and Career Education, the Office of Student Support Services, Junior Achievement of Greater Hampton Roads, and the Virginia Beach Business Partners will offer division-wide VBCPS shadow days for high school students. Each high school and the Renaissance Academy will be able to send students to participate. <clears throat> While you just saw the many cross-curricular career learning opportunities that students throughout our division high schools have, as students narrow their interests, they may begin to explore more specialized pathways. One example is the dental assisting program that's offered at the Technical and Career Center. Students in this program get hands-on learning by offering dental preventative services to classmates in both the morning and afternoon sessions. This service is provided in partnership with the Virginia Department of Dental Public Health. Two Virginia licensed dentists help provide checkups with dental report cards. This brief video that you're about to see highlights the program. Hi, my name is Kyla Arizari and I represent the Dental Assisting Program at the Technical Center. 
We send paperwork home for the parents to sign and we assist the dentist. We provide necessary dental care in our dental lab to eligible TCU students. We provide preventive care such as x-rays, cleanups, sealants, fluoride treatments, and fillings when needed. The students get the service they need while we become experienced in chair-side assisting. We also educate our patients on how to care for their teeth properly. And your parents don't have to take time off of work. Our students are getting ready to enter the workforce. We believe that having a nice smile may make all the difference in your appearance. So another specific pathway that's available that allows for a more in-depth experience is the Advanced Entrepreneurship and Innovation Program that is offered at all high schools. In this program, students work with local entrepreneurs to establish a startup business. This experience allows students to utilize skills that they have learned in front of real donors and mentors. On the left side of this slide, students are on site at a business pitching their idea for startup funds. On the right side, you will see a finished product for which the student entrepreneurs, were, in this particular case, were awarded a $500 order. They were pinned. <laughs> Another specialized opportunity offered to all high school students is participation in the Beach Street All-Stars. This band is a collection of students who perform at the Virginia Beach Oceanfront. They are a combination of part marching band, boogie band, vocal ensemble, and street entertainment developed and trained by Mr. David Hobson, who's the band director at Green Run High School. Participation in this program has helped prepare students for college level experience, professional music careers, and even as music teachers themselves. Now that you've seen courses and field experiences that are specific to career pathways, I would also like to highlight an additional pathway for students in the form of student internships. This video highlights an example of one internship experience for students, the division's dual enrollment mechatronics program and internship opportunity through STEEL. Ever since I was a kid, I remember my dad had a radio in his workshop and I took it apart just to see what it looked like on the inside. So when I hear the word STEEL apprenticeship, I immediately think that I'm gonna go alongside with engineers and people who work there to do just that, build, design, fix, do all these different things that I've been wanting to do and love doing since I was a little kid. The Apprentice Program has been around since 1984 and it's really developed and morphed into something that's far more technical these days than what it started out. It started out as very much a tool and die program and it morphed into really a mechatronics program, far more technical, which is much higher automation, which is what you'd see out on our plant floor today. We have five different apprenticeship programs registered with the state of Virginia. While I'm with the guys that are in the process engineering, the, the technicians that are speaking with the engineers in building, I was actually with them able to get a hands-on understanding of, you know, if I go down this route, that's what I'd be doing. And it was definitely something I enjoyed. This dual enrollment program does help me put the foot in the door, holding it wide open so that I can have many experiences and options. This will help me, you know, go through that field. Getting into the apprenticeship would be a dream come true. You're not just going there on your own dime. You're going there and you're getting paid, and you're getting paid very well. Straight out of my senior year of high school, this is the ultimate career starter. There is no better way. So just as a side note, one of the students from this video, Ryan Buzzy, he's now a full apprentice with Steel. Nice. So the success of this program has led to the start of a similar model with a manufacturing company called IMS Gear. We currently have three students on site starting an internship program in that field. In addition to these programs, we have entered into a regional partnership with TCC and neighboring school divisions to work with Newport News Shipbuilding, Oceaneering, Lions, and a few other companies on similar programs for welders. Our students will have the opportunity to, to earn higher level certifications, as well as on-site experience <coughs> as a locally relevant and in-demand profession. Though there's a variety of specialized uh, pathways, as you've seen, from dental assisting to internships with manufacturing companies, the opportunities for all students through our general curriculum, centers, 
academies, regional partnerships, and higher academic programs are plentiful. I would like to leave you with a portion of a video produced by the Virginia Department of Education highlighting a BBCPS grad and a former ATC student, Mary Amon. My name is Mary Amon and I work at ABS Technology as a client support engineer. For ABS, I'm a client support engineer. Um, I take trouble tickets as they come in, uh, specifically more related towards security. So if people need help with their firewalls, uh, letting stuff in, or maybe configuring it to be a little bit better for their network, um, I prefer to do security. And then I also do some route switch, troubleshooting tickets. For the CTE course, I did the Cisco Network Engineering class. Um, that was a two year program, um, two and a half hours every day for two years. The course was brand new to me, pretty much everything in it. I knew what a computer was, but that was the extent. I didn't know how anything did anything. With my two years at the, the CTE program for Cisco uh, Network Engineering, um, I learned route switch half one year, half the other year. I got my Cisco Certified Network Associate certification for Cisco Gear, and I use the knowledge that I got from that class and with that certification every day on the job. I did Skills USA and I was part of the National Technical Honor Society with the Advanced Technology Center. I would say Skills USA was definitely a highlight of um, my time at ATC because it was kind of like a competition, Cisco specific competition. I got to compete against peers. I was 17, got to go to Kansas City, my first time away from home, and uh, I got to test my skills. That opportunity helped me develop my skills further because I, I do every single one of those things minus the cabling um, every day. I wanted to go to college, I did go to college, but the idea of if that didn't work out, I'd have something to fall back on right away. So this is just one of the many videos in a CTE career video series that was produced by, by the VDOE. If you'd like to see the entire video or the series um, posted around the career clusters, they are all posted on the VDOE's website. I'll turn it back over to Dr. Cashwell. Hopefully you could see throughout the presentation that those themes I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation around awareness exploration and then eventually readiness for students really does play itself out in the multiple pathways we offer our students starting from the time they're in pre-kindergarten to the time they're in high school on an opening slide you saw um, a young man dressed in a um, doctor's outfit and later you saw high school students actually um, working as dental assistants you saw students in fourth grade all attending the symphony and then students wanting to narrow their focus and actually serving as performers for the Beach Street Boogie, Boogie Band. So you can um, definitely see that when it comes to real world pathways and preparing our students for the future, there's a very purposeful um, set of opportunities to allow them those experiences and really help launch them for their future. So we are happy to take any questions that you may have at this time. Ms. Felton. Dr. Cashwell, thank you for that uh, wonderful presentation. I too attended the uh, navigational journey the evening. It was really well attended, really enjoyed it as well. Um, Lansdowne High School was there, Bayside Middle was there, Bayside Sixth Grade was there as well, and PA. And the principal pulled these students together to bring them to this event. I was <coughs> myself surprised at all the the events, all the schools, all the different programs were inside individual schools. And believe it or not, that's where I got a lot of my PBIS uh, information from that very event. But my question to you is, will that continue and what enhancement will you do? For, because students were really excited about it to know what's going on as well. We were very excited about it as our first time. You may recall we moved away from just highlighting um, our academies through academy nights to recognizing that, and as you can see in this presentation, the pathways and opportunities go well beyond their opportunities right in every home high school, um, you know, beyond what we even offer with our academy. So really trying to open um, folks eyes to that and families um, beyond the time that they're exiting middle school going into high school. So this time we opened it up to families of all ages, uh, of students of all ages, so that they could see what our um, connections were beginning in the early years. So we will continue to do that. Many of our schools found it useful to um, bus families in if they thought that it was going to be an issue with transportation. We'll continue to help support that where it's needed. And I think um, we're hoping the, that we will have the same 
um, amount of information available, but that will get even more families there um, for our younger students. So right now, you know, uh, families were looking for that, knowing that this is an annual event, at least to look at high school academies. So we got a lot of that age group there, and we got some of our younger students and families there, but want to continue to grow that. So we'll certainly begin to market it for all of our families so that they have a, a great awareness of all of the opportunities available. This is Manning. I'm very excited about the internship opportunities. That's fantastic. Yes. How many <clears throat> students would you say right now in high school are participating in an internship opportunity? I don't have that number. I can get it because we do track that now. Um, so certainly where you see heavy numbers, a lot, all of our ATC programs, mm -hmm. most of our TCE programs all involve that, but now more and more at our high schools, you'll see that um, has been a push. Uh, a lot of programs we're trying out for the first time. For example, there's a physical, personal um, training um, and fitness program that we started at Kellum this year, and then those students are able to intern at local fitness clubs and health centers, and that's something we'll continue to grow. So I don't have a number for you right now, but definitely those numbers are growing very quickly. Do we have a goal set for each school? And is this kind of a site-based thing, or are we helping the schools? We as are as helping them come okay. up with those opportunities. And, you know, it's something that we saw as a big push not only locally here in Virginia Beach knowing that that really meets our goal of our strategic plan around multiple pathways but the VDOE has a big plan. So you'll see now this push towards their uh, profile of a graduate attributes and one of their graduation requirements really centering around this idea that every student have the opportunity to participate in some sort of internship or internship like experience so the push would be to create opportunities for every students to have um, have some something like that. Great. Um, <coughs> Mrs. Wright? Yeah. I, I do like the way you presented it in the context of broadening the academy philosophy mm -hmm. uh, because the reality is I'm going out on a limb here but I would say at most 20 percent of our students are academy students so that's, I mean and that's mm -hmm. not factoring in the schools where there are not academies so my point being that um, it's just wonderful to uh, to have that many more opportunities for the other 80%. Yes. Ms. McLeod. I'm not for sure if this question, I'm confident you can answer it, but I might be more directed towards counseling. So this is wonderful and the program's in place, you do that. And obviously by having this night, there will be people getting kids to come to explore and find out and be aware. Yes. But then what's next? Because I have a greater concern about the follow-up to the students yes. and the guidance department yes. and what have you. That's an excellent question. And really the foundational piece that um, carries throughout all of these opportunities is our academic and career plan, or we often call it the ACP. So um, in prior years, while that process was very thorough, getting kids to take interest inventories at certain points in their career, log those, um, make course choices based on that and begin planning for not only middle and high school, but then eventually graduation. We've taken that to the next level and developed um, a number of resources on our ACP site to really get families involved with beginning to think through some of these opportunities. We actually have pathway documents, which we highlighted at our Navigating the Journey Night, but are all found on that site. And families can take a look early on and see, you know, if I'm interested in any number of career clusters, what might that look like um, for a four-year college track? What might that look like for something to go right into the workforce? What would the courses be that are necessary? What are regionally relevant um, work areas? So hospitality and tourism, cyber, areas that are hot that we've worked with our local economic development folks on. We've tagged those with pins um, so that they can see if a family's looking or a student's thinking, oh, this might be something where I might be able to find a job right away in the area. Um, that might um, help with their interests. But absolutely more resources that students and families can grab on their own and then a process for being able to collect that information over time. We're able to do now through Schoology, the academic and career planning process will sort of be a portfolio that carries with students um, throughout their whole time with us. So that's wonderful and allows easier access. And then also um, being able to, of course, increase the number of counselors in, in our secondary schools will be a big help in providing that one-on-one -on -one assistance when students need it. So while we can't rely on those one-on-one -on -one interactions, we want to uh, make sure that when they occur, they're very meaningful and then that resources um, that wrap around are easy to find. So, I mean, the meaningful part is let's, you know, they have them for 20 minutes and what can you yeah. really do in 20 minutes? And every single aspect of the folks I work with right now at every single meeting we have, they do not have enough workforce. 
we do not have enough qualified people to actually enter and be a productive workforce member. And, I mean, from temp agencies to, I mean, yeah. every, every single part of it. Anyone else? Ms. Melnick? Can that be addressed, Dr. Spence, through the, um, help me, Mr. Kiever. Um, oh, um, well, I wasn't thinking two reps, but I was thinking um, when we pull our kids during the day for their groups. Oh, advisory? Yes. Oh, advisory group, yeah. Yeah, actually the ACP process is being incorporated into the okay. advisories. This yes. year. So there are a number of opportunities. Of course, they'll still exist with the school counselor, but the advisory block will allow schools to focus um, on issues they, they may want to focus in on as a school that are specific to them, but then all of the advisors will have a mental health component as well as an academic career planning component that will take them through some of those resources. Um, as well, so hopefully the access and the follow through follow through will be a little stronger based on some of those systematic opportunities mm -hmm. like advisory. Anyone else? Yes, Ms. Belton. Just because, <laughs> Dr. Cashwell, you mentioned that the advanced entrepreneurship and innovative program they're in all schools. That's a course at all high schools. Okay. But I look at that we also have the uh, Entrepreneurship Business Academy. Correct. And the Business Academy has the career ready component, the uh, the internship component, and the four year component. So are these two collaborating? Are they operating on their own? Because I'm concerned to all the students getting this um, all this information as well because it's a lot coming at them if, if it's in all school. So how we separate them and let them know what they're getting? Yes, so the course that's offered at every high school has a lot of the strands that are offered more in depth at the um, Entrepreneur and Business Academy. So a student entering the academy would specialize in that programmatically for the entire time they're in high school, where this would be someone who is interested in business and entrepreneurship and, and studying it at the advanced level, but may not want to um, be an academy student, but still want to have that experience. And so many of the strands mirror the strands that are at the academy. They're just not covered over the length of time. And as in, <coughs> they still get the opportunity to pitch ideas and um, do those same sorts of things with the startups and that sort of thing. And being aware that the academy is limited to how many students is allowed in that program? It would be a norm, what would be filled in a normal course class. So they'd have the opportunity to take it um, a number of times throughout their experience. But yeah, it's limited to normal course size. Thank you. Mr. Edwards. The uh, marketing um, staffs, or business staffs at the individual high schools, yes. in years gone by, used to, part of their duties involved going out and identifying internships. Mm -hmm. and, and I understand a few years back that wasn't, that function was not staffed as heavily. Uh, where are we on, on yeah. that? One of the coordinators at the Advanced Technology Center who oversees that business and marketing piece helps with um, the professional development and training and coordination for the individual courses and classes across the city and helps do some of that centrally to take a little bit of that load off the individuals. Um, but, you know, particular programs at each high school may have a unique need or their location may lend itself um, very easily to an internship at something that's very local or nearby. So um, to that extent, that's still happening where they may reach out and establish some of those opportunities on their own, and then we do a lot of that centrally as well. So. Thank you, Dr. Cashwell. Thank you. Next, we're ready for the communications and social media update. <clears throat> yes, and so by way of introduction, you may want to take advantage of this because <laughs> this will uh, also be. Eileen Cox's final workshop with us. And so I know Hi, congratulations are in order to um, to Eileen for her move to Williamsburg, James City County, and a new role there. So congratulations. Thank you. I do not have as many years here as Amy does, but they have all been just as memorable. So Fortunately, I will still get to keep up with all of it through your communications and social media. <laughs> 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 so good. 
Good afternoon. I'm Eileen Cox. <clears throat> for the next three days, the Chief Media and Communications Officer for Virginia Beach City Public Schools, and I'm joined by Lauren Alaska, the Director of Communications, and Bradley Wyndham, one of the division's two webmasters, to provide you all with an update on our existing communication platforms and uh, also some new initiatives and to give you a sneak peek of the soon to be unveiled, reimagined, redesigned vbschools.com. So before we get to the new website though, we need to look at where we've been and how far we've come. And Lauren's gonna start us there. So it's hard to believe, but it was roughly five years ago that I was again standing here sharing with you the progress that we had made on some new communications efforts. Uh, some things that we were trying out, really groundbreaking things, known as a Facebook page and an Instagram account. <laughs> uh, looking back at our Instagram account, it was clear that the only people following along were our office staff and members of my immediate family. Thanks, Mom and Dad. We've grown since then, right? So now, uh, if you look, our social media efforts have really become a part of our everyday communications. Uh, if we take a quick look at how we're performing, you'll see that our Twitter page has more than 24,000 followers. Uh, our Instagram brings in another 2,000 followers, and our Facebook page has more than 18,000. 700 followers. Social media has been a consistent communications channel for us where we not only get to communicate quickly, but we get to engage with our community directly. So what does that look like? Well, an example of this engagement is comes in just two weeks ago. Uh, with our social media channels hit one of its busiest times with our graduation oh, coverage. Nice. The VBCPS wow. hashtag was used throughout all 13 graduation ceremonies. And through that work, we reached close to half a million people with all of our photos, <laughs> videos, and posts from graduation. And that raked wow. in more than 1.7 million impressions or the total amount of times that our content was displayed in people's news feeds. So as part of the effort to continue to share our great news, we also developed a series of blogs where we can do that great storytelling. So we have our staff blog, which I think most are familiar with, Kaleidoscope, um, which just this past year had 32,268 unique visitors. That unique visitors figure means that about 32,000 different people visited the site. That was just not one person who kept refreshing the site 32,000 times. Uh, Kaleidoscope's engagement is particularly noteworthy because we have roughly 10,000 employees. So with 32,000 visitors, what we're seeing is people are connecting with that content and they're sharing it uh, beyond just our division's buildings, which is exciting for us. We also have The Court, which is more of a community blog, places where students, families, partners, and anyone <coughs> interested can pop by and see some of the amazing work going on in the division, as well as get news and information about our schools. Looking at our analytics that we pulled just yesterday, The Court had 71,485 unique visitors this school year. Again, that's more than 71,000 people who visited the site and either learned a new story or had some new information about our division. And finally, we have our We Are VB Schools blog, which if you have not visited, let me encourage you to stop by for a few moments. Here you get to meet the people who make up this division. Students, staff members, volunteers. You get just a snapshot of the men and women and boys and girls who make Virginia Beach City Public Schools the place that it is. These vignettes are shared on our Facebook page every night at 8 p.m. and they are, without a doubt, some of the highest viewed and most shared pieces of content that we have. Each post usually brings in a unique reach that's somewhere in the thousands. So, I've shared with you just a few of the mediums and outlets where we proactively share information and news. However, we're always, we're always looking for new ways that we're able to connect our content with our community. In January of last year, we developed our A Slice of BBCBS digital newsletter to have another avenue to get these stories and these highlights and division news in front of our stakeholders. This year, we began sending Slice to all of our parents and staff members through our Alert Now system, which is roughly 88,000 <coughs> contacts uh, each week. So as we move forward with the new Alert Now provider this year, beginning July 1, we're actually going to be able to pull analytic data on these emails, which is exciting because then we get to see open rates, click-through rates, um, what stories are most read, and that's only going to help us as we start building out more communications efforts in the future. So uh, while we were looking at all the ways that we could share our content and some of the best practices, we were also looking at some of our communication foundations our website and our mobile presence. And we had to ask some, some tough questions. Like, quite frankly, we have a lot of great information. We have a lot of great resources, but are things like the way that our, late, our website is designed and laid out, does it make it easier for people to find that information or make it a little bit more difficult? Um, was it possible for us to create a, an app that could house all the digital resources and tools that we had so that families would have an easier time to have a one-stop shop for everything that they would need for the school division? So the answer to those is yes. Um, and at the same time that we were asking those questions, we were looking to fill a vacancy within our office uh, due to the retirement of a staff member. And so we really looked at what did we need from that person and what could they bring to enhance our communications team. And we realized that digital content 
and our website were an opportunity for us. So we were fortunate Erica Yelland uh, joined our team. She has uh, significant experience both through the military and through private sector uh, working with digital resources and marketing. And so she uh, joined the division. She actually was going to be here this evening, but uh, had a, a family emergency and couldn't be here with you. So I feel a little bit uh, like I'm stealing her thunder, unveiling the website that she worked so, so diligently on. So uh, when you see her next week, please make sure you give her, uh, give her congratulations on the look. Erica and the webmasters, HL and Bradley, um, really looked at our website to see how user-friendly was it, what were folks coming to see, um, and, and were we getting the information as quickly and efficiently as possible. And so, um, as you can see in our current website, lots of drop-down menus, lots of buttons, um, but not necessarily, if you don't know what the Great Dreams Need Great Teachers campaign is, do you know what you're, you're looking for or you're going to get when you click that? So we wanted to make sure that we provided a streamlined uh, page and experience for the visitors that come to vbschools.com. And so how did we do that? Well, it began with a lot of research. Uh, HL and Bradley and Erica reviewed all sorts of data and pages, 3,200 pages and 65,000 files, including photos and videos and PDFs to see what pages were visitors looking at and what items were they searching for when they came to our page and used our search box. Um, and so I don't think you're going to be surprised by the answers to those questions. What were they searching for and what were they looking at? It's things that you might expect, uh, calendars, uh, meals, transportation, uh, employment opportunities, uh, the parent portal. Um, so it was a lot of work. It was very hard work, but it was worth it because it allowed us to really hone in on those items and make sure that they were easy to find for our viewers or for our visitors. It also helped us, we were moving the website into full compliance with the Americans with Disabilities Act because what it also revealed is that there were some pages that had been created years and years and years ago that hadn't been visited. Um, and so was that information housed somewhere else? Were we able to eliminate some of the clutter on our site? And we found that there were, so we were able to to remove those as well. Um, so we wanted to make sure as we were looking at not just what we were providing to folks, but how did that look and what was their experience and did it align with our other digital uh, resources and channels and marketing? Was it branded the same way or did it look like it was a, a parallel but not aligned uh, instrument? So. Da, 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 da. Are you ready? Ready. All right. Here we go. To be launched on Monday, July 2nd is the new and improved vbschools.com. Uh, you'll see that it's very crisp. It's very clean. Uh, it's very intuitive once you're on the site. Um, so we're not going to walk you through the live start right now. We're going to make you do that on Tuesday, but we do want to show you just some of the highlights. So at the very top of the page, you'll see the division logo and our core values. We include those on all of our communications, and we want that to have the same look. We have our um, top menus for some of our most visited areas as far as you know, the military page, specific pages that people might see. We kept the uh, slideshow there. We know that that's a great place to highlight our students and our staff and events. We can also make graphics that post announcements of upcoming events. And then right below the slideshow, you'll see those hot buttons. Those are the things that we talked about as the most visited and searched items, the transportation, mm -hmm. the calendar, the parent portal, school hours, and employment. But once you leave this front page, you still need to have that um, clean, efficient experience. So if you were to click on enrollment, for example, here you'll notice that the page is, again, very user-friendly, very intuitive, and it, you can easily find what is it that you need to bring with you if you're registering your child for school. It's right there, easy to find. You don't have to keep searching. So at the same time we were looking at the division page at vbschools.com, we thought, um, you know, the same was, oh, I'm sorry, I skipped ahead. So if we go back to the home page, uh, below the hot buttons there, you'll find a recent news section that has uh, our press releases, it has stories from the core and the kaleidoscope, especially those most visited stories that Lauren was talking about. And then in the connect with us section, it has some of our ongoing campaigns, the Great Dreams Need Great Teachers, the We Are VB Schools, our Be Social, Be Smart, Be Safe digital responsibility campaign. 
And then another area that we receive a lot of interest in is volunteer opportunities and making that readily available for folks. So now as we were looking at the division website, we also wanted to make sure that visitors had that same experience when they visited individual school web pages. So da 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 da. This is an example of a school page, wow. Fairfield Elementary. You'll notice again that it has the, um, the large slideshow there that will include um, you know, indicators from the building, their mascot, their building itself, but also a place where they can feature student and staff photos and announcements. Uh, it has the same latest news section um, and the quick links for the most searched things at an elementary school level or at a middle school or at a high school level. And also really important on this page is the map. We have so many people coming in and out of the division, especially mm -hmm. military families. We want to make it as easy as possible for them to find out, is this a school in my neighborhood? Where am I going when I'm visiting a school? So we added that feature. And it again includes a calendar of events that will feature not only the school's individual events, but all of the division events will be pushed out to the schools as well. So as um, we moved on, Lauren mentioned the mobile app and the idea that we wanted to have a place to house um, some of the existing apps that we're using that were kind of in, out individually from departments or schools, and then also some of the important messages, messages and communications that we send out to families routinely. So we field tested an app with 10 schools this year. Uh, it was very, very positive, the feedback that we received. Uh, in fact, we had a parent contact our office whose child attended a school that was not a field test school but came across the mobile app and wanted to know when were they going to have the opportunity to use the mobile app. So we knew the time was right as we're redesigning and relaunching the website to also launch a more comprehensive mobile app division-wide. Um, so you'll notice that many of the items from the website's homepage are also included in the mobile app the calendar, the news, the transportation. But here's a really important feature. You see there in the middle at the top there, notifications. Uh, this would be any notification that goes out as an alert now message will also now be pushed to the mobile app. And we're able to do that because we're using the same provider for our app and our alert now and our website. So anytime someone gets a text or a, a phone call, you know, we won't receive all those phone calls saying, I just missed a call from you. What does it say? It will be right there for you. <laughs> So if we go to the next part of the app, you'll see uh, again some of the most commonly used apps at high school and middle school, the sports calendars, um, some of the classroom apps that are being used, Schoology is on there. But I want to draw your particular attention up to the top there for the reported app. And this uh, app will allow students and families and members of the public to report if they see uh, uh, a social media threat or a maintenance issue or anything that they want to make us aware of. It's called P3, which stands for police or public police and private sector. And um, this is an app that's currently being used by Crime Solvers. So we partnered with Crime Solvers and thank you to Mr. Edwards as a board member with Crime Solvers. He was really instrumental in bringing us together to collaborate on that. Um, and so we're able to nest in an app that's already familiar to our community and also uh, tweak it a little bit uh, on our site so that it's user friendly. So when you log in, when you click on the report it feature, you'll see this box uh, to your left where you can uh, include your name, the who, what, and when of your report. You can remain anonymous or you can include your contact information for the police. You also have the opportunity to upload or attach a photo or a screen grab of something that you might see online. So for example, if you're running um, at, a, at one of the tracks at the school and you see an issue, you can take a quick picture and upload it right there. Um, because it is the Crime Solvers app, there are numerous types of crimes, issues, or incidents that can be reported but we numbered those that are most uh, relevant to our schools so that they will appear at the top of the list when you access it through our app. But there are, again, all sorts of uh, things that you can report through the Crime Solvers app. Um, we're using Report It rather than P3 because we think that's more understandable, perhaps to some of our younger students uh, who might be looking to uh, report something with either themselves or by their, with their families. Um, so this is a really great feature and I think that, uh, again, it 
shows that collaboration that we have with our police department and with um, the city agencies that uh, through Mr. Edwards we were able to come together and rather than reinvent the wheel, um, make use of something that is already familiar to our community. Great. Well, this has been a huge effort, uh, as you can imagine, and I want to thank our amazing team in the communications office who, in my humble and completely biased opinion, uh, <laughs> do some of the best writing, planning, photographing, designing, all of it, and school communications work really in the country. Um, we have incredibly talented people working for us, including Erica, uh, HL, Bradley, um, our other coordinators, Heather Allen and Rosemary Gladden. Um, for this work, we really had to work very closely with technology, as you can imagine, so uh, from our mission's office, we just want to say thank you, especially Especially to Chris Bruno and John Clary, Joan Burt, and Jonathan Edwards for all of their work, um, who are great and valued partners as we were doing this pretty large transition. Um, and finally, I also want to point out that thanks to an RFP process from earlier in the year and the work of our purchasing office, we were able to negotiate a bundle pricing package. So our new rapid notification system, new website host provider, and new app will all be the same cost at what just our previous alert now system used to cost. So this means there are no budget increases for these new platforms. So a big thank you to you all. Great. A big thank you to Claire Shop, especially Kevin Beardsley and Carl Smith for um, for that as well. So we have thrown a great deal at you, and this time we're happy to take any questions. Mr. Edwards. When can we download the app? Yeah, so okay. I know. So, just wondering that. Uh, yeah. Question: um, The app, the website will launch on Monday, July second. The app will be available for download just in time for back to school in August, and we'll send out a notification to all of our families. It will be available through both uh, Apple and Google Play. Um, and we will push that out through our Alert Now system <coughs> to make sure that everybody has that, students and our families and staff alike. Nice. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. Ms. McLeod. I just want to compliment you. Um, you this is way, way better, but mm -hmm. you had already done a really good job. I do everything by my phone, and you had already made it to the website so much better on the phone, so I'm all looking forward to seeing right. the new site. So, good job. And HL and Bradley designed that mobile site. That was oh, all done. Well we did that. Done. Done. All right. Two years ago. Thank you so much. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. So our next item is the forecast uh, agenda items for the first quarter of uh, fiscal year 19. Yeah, that right? that's correct. <clears throat> so those are coming around, and Diane's going to put them up. So this is the first quarter forecast for the next school year. Couple you need of, one more. You do? Okay, well, it's coming around. Here you go. Apologies. Thank you. A um, couple of things to point out. You see, uh, first and foremost, I'll just mention on the 14th and 28th, you see blank lines. Uh, so part of that was intentional. Um, typically at the July retreat, we have some conversation about future workshop topics that you have interest in. And so we wanted to leave a little bit of space uh, in the <laughs> case that you um, had some things that were more pressing than second quarter items. And so we did that intentionally. Um, we have captured some other conversations that we've had with you. Um, and so just a quick review of some of the workshop topics. Um, We'll be talking again about uh, professional learning and what the focus areas for the next school year are. Uh, there'll be an overview of what's happening at the federal level with ESSA and how that's going to play out at the state level. Um, you'll get, as you always do, a review of standard of, uh, SOL student performance. Uh, and we'll be bringing to you results and administrative recommendations based on the employee input process. And then at the end of the quarter, um, an overview of the base alternative behavioral program. That's that classroom that we've created to try to begin piloting a, a way to deal with um, uh, extremely disruptive elementary school students. Um, and so we'll bring you, uh, we, we push that towards the end of the quarter because we're launching a second phase of that um, pilot. And we wanted to have a little bit of time to be able to tell you how that how that's going. And then we'll give you a CIP construction projects update, which is uh, about the time of year we usually do that um, in the quarter. So those, uh, those are the main uh, workshop items, information schedule um, is uh, fairly, fairly typical. 
uh, along with the action of consent. So with that said, any questions uh, or things that you are missing you'd like to see on? And again, a reminder at the retreat, we will leave a little time at the end for if you've got specific things you want to see included um, so you don't have to think of them tonight. Anyone have anything? Wow. Okay. I'm sure we'll think of it. Could leave in those blank lines. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, um, I guess that's it. So we can, if we might have time to go into glows. What do you think? That's up to you guys. Yeah, I mean, I'll spoil and step out. I don't stay in here. Yeah. Oh. I think we probably can. I think we can. I think we have time. You can continue it till later. If we need to continue, we will. Let's do it. Another. Right. I'll put the thing in the wood. Go. Madam Chair, I move that whereas the school board of the city of Virginia Beach has convened the. Oh, that's not my correct one. <laughs> Oh, it's really short at the top. I move that the school board adopt a motion to recess and close meeting pursuant to exemptions from open meetings allowed by section 2.237.11, part A, paragraph one of the Code of Virginia, 1950, as amended for A, personnel matters, discussion, consideration, or interviews of prospective candidates for employment, alignment, promotion, promotion, performance, demotion, salaries, disciplining, or resignation of specific public officers, appointees, or employees pursuant to section 2.237.11a1, namely to discuss performance evaluation of a specific administrator. So moved. It's been moved and seconded. Uh, all those in favor, going into close, raise your hand, please. All those opposed? 